Right, it's time now for Focus, and today we have a report on the facial recognition boom in China. The technology is used for all sorts of things, like opening doors and even ensuring that everyone using a public bathroom gets the exact same amount of toilet paper. It's hailed as progress, but also poses ethical questions, particularly in a country with 170 million surveillance cameras, and that number is set to more than double in the next few years. Pierre-Philippe Berson sent us this report. The Temple of Heaven is one of Beijing's most popular tourist spots. Several meters away from it, there's a new attraction, the public restrooms. To get toilet paper, tourists now have to stand facing this facial recognition dispenser. The rule is simple, no more than three sheets per person. The machine recognizes individuals trying to get more. Installed last March as a trial, this kind of dispenser could see wide use in the near future. In China, facial recognition isn't limited to just bathrooms. The technology is getting more visible on campus, too. In female dormitories at Beijing Normal University, keys are no longer used. The door automatically opens after a face scanning process. In some months, every building will be equipped with such machines. This hasn't raised any concern among the students. This is much safer. Unknown individuals can't get in. This is not a science fiction nightmare. This is just progress. Technology makes our life better. Facial recognition is popping up everywhere in everyday life in China. The sector is booming, over 15% growth per year. Between now and 2020, sales could pass 6 billion euros. The company Face++ Plus Plus is a leader in the Chinese market. This startup is valued at $1 billion, partly because of its groundbreaking innovation in image scanning. On these screens, you can see that every person in the room is filmed real time. The grid you see here is analyzing my face. Our cameras can now recognize me, even from the side or when my head rotates 30 degrees to the left or right, or 15 degrees up or down. All employees at the company have given their face prints. Cameras film and record every move. The startup is specifically working on the security sector. The field is flourishing in China right now. There are over 170 million cameras all across the country. By 2020, there will be another 450 million of them. Now we can convert video surveillance footage into real-time information for the police. Here we can see the exact location where we found a runaway criminal. Other countries, especially the U.S., have similarly advanced technology, but China is the first one to really implement this. In an authoritarian country like China, no one publicly criticizes this mass surveillance. The protection of personal data is not really debated. However, one artist was inspired by the omnipresent army of cameras. Xu Bing is a filmmaker. He made this movie called Dragonfly Eyes with only surveillance camera footage. This is Dragonfly. There are no actors, only anonymous people who are not aware of being filmed. Some people look like each other. Xu Bing was able to form a protagonist and make a plot. Xu Bing downloaded all these materials online. In China, hundreds of websites live stream surveillance video. He has 7,000 hours in total. We've been working on this project for over a year. Actually, it took us nearly two years. And during all that time, we kept downloading and watching surveillance videos. We had about 20 computers in our workshop running 24 hours a day. There were five or six staff members, sometimes less, sometimes more, but always working full time. As a result, the movie looks dark and worrying and poses questions about mass surveillance. After watching all these videos, my assistants were more careful when they went out on the streets. This film has a few scary parts. And as we progressed in our work, I felt this anxiety creeping up inside me. The movie is a snapshot of today's China, but for the director, this could soon be a reality anywhere. Right, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by Fabrice Ebelpoint. He teaches at Sciences Po University here in Paris and is the co-founder of Yogosha. Hello, thank you very much Thanks for, having for coming me. in. Now, 
in China, as we just saw, facial recognition is used for all sorts of things like opening doors and boarding planes and catching criminals. But just how reliable is this technology? How accurate? So far, it's not extremely reliable, but it will become more and more reliable. There are always you, uh, ways to bypass such techniques, but it is becoming more and more reliable. What are the ways? Can you use some sort of disguise? If you wear a hat, sunglasses, a mask, can you actually avoid? Yeah, typically, except that, for example, in France, it's illegal to do this in the streets. It's illegal to do what in the streets? To hide your face in the streets. Right. So the technology isn't quite, well, uh, it's not 100% accurate, but it's certainly more and more developed and it's developing uh, very fast. Um, And as we saw in the report as well, there are 170 million surveillance cameras in China. Apparently, the number is set to reach 450 million by 2020. How does that compare to other countries in the world, that number of cameras? We should do the math, but it sounds awfully similar to the the UK, for example, or to what France is poised to become in the coming years. So would you say that now it's just something that's happening all around the world then, that you really can't be anonymous anymore? The the surveillance state is a global phenomenon. It is transforming governance all over the world, whether it's the American uh, governance or the French or European way to see democracy or China. They are all going the same way. Uh, For example, in the United States, uh, who could have guessed 20 years ago that the Fourth Amendment, who would have protected you from uh, illegal warrant, would be just a piece of history. It's gone now, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, In France or in Europe, you don't have any right to privacy anymore. It's gone. And in China, yeah, the, the, the Chinese government is changing because all those governments are using mass surveillance technologies. But then isn't the issue that this surveillance um, technology could be used for cracking down on on dissidents, for example, in China? You could use the technology to catch protesters. Yeah, of course. You could use this in France tomorrow. And um, a month ago, uh, Donald Trump asked uh, to have the list of every American citizen looking for anti-Trump content on the Internet. So he thinks he is going to use this. So even though we have democracy in Europe and in the US and and China is a different uh, system, you're saying that we're just as um, unprotected and as exposed as anyone in China? I'm saying that you should question yourself about what is democracy? What age are we living in? Are we really living in a democracy? And are those technology really helping? I'm afraid the answer is no. Now... We saw you mentioned the UK before and with the number of surveillance cameras over there. And uh, during the Notting Hill Carnival, um, the police used facial recognition uh, to to look through the crowd to see if anyone was there who shouldn't be there. Do you think that's something we're going to see more and more? Yes, of course. We are seeing it already. And we're going to see more and more since those technologies are going to be used worldwide either in Europe, in UK, in China, in America, every country who has the technology, uh, technological power to use those technologies are going to use them. But is it affordable? It will become eventually affordable. It is already affordable for states, and uh, you can already have those technology if you're using a Macintosh, for example. Uh, the photo editor in, uh, on the Macintosh has those technology. It's used to identify, for example, the picture of your mother throughout all your picture or the picture you took, but it could be used in very different ways. For example, such technology have been used during the London riots a few years ago to identify looters by ordinary citizens looking to do justice themselves, which is kind of a problem in democracy. So do you think it's more inspiring or alarming overall to have this kind of technology available to us? Overall, it's pretty alarming because nobody really realized how it is changing our world and nobody really realized the side effect it, it is going to have on our political regime, whether they are authoritarian regime or democracies. All those regimes are going to change deeply because of those technology. And this is a question nobody really asks the people who governs us. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed for shedding some light on this issue. Fabrice Ebelboin joining us there from Sciences Po University. Thanks for your time. Thank you for watching. We're going to go to a break.